From last class, we talked about graphing linear inequalities. So for number one, start at your y-intercept of three. Use your slope and go up one to the right two as many times as possible. Down one, left two as many times as possible. This should have been a dashed line. So you could do one or two things. Um, either put little dashes in between or just draw arrows at the end and call it a dotted line instead. And then because this is a greater than, remember if you're not sure which way to shade, look at your y-intercept, draw arrows up and down. This should be above. Above is up, so that would be everywhere up here. And then you have to state a possible solution. So someone tell me one ordered pair that would fall in the shaded area that would be a solution. Questions on that one? Right, so you just need one of those points. It doesn't matter which one, as long as it falls in there. Remember, it can't fall on this line because then it wouldn't be a solution. For number two, you have to solve this first and then graph it. Get rid of your 6x. Start making this look like it's in slope-intercept form. Divide everything by negative 5. We have y is now less than or equal to the sign of change direction. A positive six fifths x minus two. The positive six x. Because we divided by negative, so it's already yeah. negative. So this will start at negative two, go up six to the right five. You could have just done those two points if you wanted to extend your graph a little bit. You could do that. You didn't need to. but that point would be like out there. This would be a solid line. And then this is less than. So less than would be below. So we would shade underneath here. Questions on that one? Yes. The very last one, um, last class we did this a couple times, that if you have a solution point that maybe you're not sure, is it a solution, is it not, does it fall on the line, does it not, um, you can put it back in and solve and see does it make a true or false statement. If true, it's a solution, if false, it's not. So this would be 3 times 5 over 3 minus 4 times negative 1 fourth is less than 6. So this would just be 5, this would become a plus, 1, so we have 6 is less than 6. Is this a true statement? Is 6 less than 6? No. If it was equal to, it would be true, but because it's not a true statement, it's not a solution. Right. Questions on that last one? All right. So today we're going to do our last lesson in inequalities, which is systems of inequalities. And then 
Friday will be your quiz on all this stuff. <laughs> Make sure you guys are paying attention. So the steps are very similar to what we did last class. Make sure it's in slope intercept form. Uh, the rules are kind of the same. You don't necessarily have to uh, write down the slope or y intercept. That's if you want. Plot the y intercept. Plot your slope. Determine if it's a dashed or a solid line, and then shade it depending on whether it's less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to. So all those are the same as before. So when we graph a system of inequality, there's going to be two of them graphed together on the same graph. So these three up here printed kind of small on your paper, so just go down to this bottom one. Right, so we have two inequalities. One is already in slope intercept form, one is not, so we need to solve that one first. So we would move the 3x to the other side by doing the opposite, add it. So we have 5y is less than 3x plus 10. Divide everything by 5. We have y is less than 3 over 5x plus 2. And then we can graph this. Um, I meant to say this before we started this. I would recommend as we start doing these that you graph these in either two different writing utensils or two different colors. Um, that way you're able to see where they overlap easier. And also, we're able to see where they overlap on your paper easier. So that could be pencil, pen, uh, highlighter, pencil. I have colored pencils and a colorful tray if you want different colors. Just have two different things. Um, if you're using pencil for both, maybe shade in two different directions or draw lines instead of just shading. So I'm going to do mine in two different colors so you see where they overlap. So for this one, we would start at positive 2, go up 3 to the right 5, and then down 3 to the left 5, also if you need rulers, they are also in the colorful cart. This would be a dash or a solid line. Dash. Dash. Okay, and then this would be shaded above or below. If it's less than, it would be shaded above or below. And if you're not sure which way below is, look at your y-intercept. Draw up and down arrows. Below would be down, above would be up. So we're going to shade down here. How you shade is up to you. I'm just going to draw different line directions so you see where they overlap. Questions on that first one? The second one is already in slope intercept form, so we just need to graph it. Start at your y intercept, negative 5. 
Your slope is negative two, so go up and left. Up two to the, to the left one, sorry. As many times as possible, fill up your graph. And then down to the right one. This line would be dashed or solid. Solid because of the equal to underneath. And then shaded above or below. It's greater than or equal to. You shade above or below? Above. So for this one, above would be where this is up. So from the y-intercept, draw an arrow up. And everywhere where the up would be is where you're shading. So the goal of this is to see where these overlap. If you can easily see them, like maybe use two different colors or two different line directions, then you don't have to outline it. Um, if you still want to outline it just because or just to see that this is where they overlap, you can use highlighters. So we're looking at where do both of them lie, and that would be this section or this area right here. So then for our points to check and see, do they fall in the shaded area or not, they have to fall in the overlapping, so they can't just fall in one. So would negative two, negative two work? Would that fall inside the shaded area, the overlapping shaded area? Is that in the shaded area? It's right out. It's in one of them, but is it in both? No. So it would not be. One, negative one, would that fall in the overlapping shaded area? I kind of hard to see. It's okay. Would that fall in that yellow area? Yes. One, positive one, would that fall in that overlapping area? Yes. Yeah. Two positive five. Would this fall in the overlapping area? Guys, pay attention. Would this fall in the overlapping area? No. And what about six zero? Would that fall in the overlapping? Yes. So we'll do more examples when we get back from lunch. Um, so we went through all of these to determine, are they solutions, are they not? If you had an ordered pair that fell on like the intersection, you would want to check both of those to see if they work. Put them into both of these and see are they both true, are they both false, is one true, is one false. Um, if one of your lines is dashed and one of your lines is solid, especially like that, always double check to see if that point that falls on the intersection is a solution or not, because it could be for one and not for the other. Um, if both lines are dashed and it falls on that intersection point, it's most likely not going to be a solution. If both lines are solid, then it should be a solution. So, always make sure you double check. 
Do we have any questions on this example? If not, go to this page. Um, so the shading is a little off for some of your graphs. So for like number two, you can't really see that this is shaded. So just lightly shade this in, this area right here. And then we're going to do one of these examples and then move on. So this is kind of like what we did last class when we were writing the inequality from the graph. So same thing here. So we have to find our y-intercept and then our slope and then determine what our symbol would be. So for this solid line, I see that our y-intercept is at 4. So we know that our line is going to have a plus 4 at the end. If we find a point on the grid line, so any of these points would work, make sure the pattern follows all the way through, so there'll be a lot of dots. So if that pattern follows all the way through, then that would be your slope. If it doesn't, um, then that's probably not your slope. Recount. So our slope of this line would be what? If we had to count our rise over run, what would it be for this line? Negative one x. Yep. So we know this much so far. Why we don't know our uh, inequality symbol? Negative one x or just negative x plus four. To determine what symbol it is, we know this is a solid line, so it has to be less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. If I'm looking at my y-intercept, is that shaded above or below just for that line? Is this shaded above it or below it? It. So that means this has to be a less than or equal to. So that's one of your inequalities. Then we have to find the other. Okay. On the other one, same thing. Find your y intercept, which is at negative 2. Find a point on your dashed line that crosses the grid line exactly. So any of these, but make sure the pattern follows all the way through. And it seems to do that. Again, a lot of points. So then our slope of this line would be what? So counting our rise over our run, what would that be? We know this is a dashed line, so this is either going to be a greater than or less than. Strictly greater than, strictly less than. So if we look at our y-intercept, is this shaded above this line or below it? Mm -hmm. So that would be greater than. It also asks 
ask us to state a solution that would fall in the overlapping shaded area. So someone give me one ordered pair that would be a solution. should definitely work for that one. I don't know about this one, but it has to work for both. So 5 is less than or equal to negative 1 times 2 plus 4. So 5 is less than or equal to negative 2 plus 4. 5 is less than or equal to 2 plus 4, 6. Okay, so that one should work. The other one shouldn't. Is this a true statement? Yeah. It's 5 less than 6. Yes. So that one works. And then we have to test the other one. So 5 is greater than 1 times negative 2 minus 2. So negative 2 minus 2 negative 4. Is this a true statement? Yes. So because it works for both, then yes, that would be a solution. If you did it on the other one, more than likely it's probably not going to be a solution. But always double check. Don't assume. Other questions on that one? Um, not the calculator page that comes next, but skip to the page after that. We'll come back to the calculator page in a second. Find this one. So we're just going to do a couple of these examples. I'm going to show you how it works on the calculator, and then you'll have time to practice after we go over any other if you want to see. Right? So we kind of talked about this, but just so you have it in words. A system of inequalities is two or more linear inequalities on the same graph. It seems like when you fall their thumbs. The solution to a system of inequalities is the overlapping region. of points that satisfies both inequalities. So we're going to do number one and then number seven on the back. So with number one, neither of these are in slope-intercept form, so we have to change it first. Get rid of your x by subtracting it to the other side. So for the first one, we have y is greater than negative x minus 1. Whether you solve it and then graph it, or solve both and then graph both, that order does not matter as long as you do the both. Um, so I'm going to solve the other one and then graph them both. For the second inequality, also get rid of that x, subtract it to the other side. So we have negative y is greater than negative x plus 5, but we have to get rid of that negative. Divide everything by negative 1. 
Your sign would change directions. So we'd have y is less than 1x minus 5. I'm going to graph that one first. So start at negative 5. And go up one, right one, as many times as possible. Fill up your graph. And then down one and left one as many times as possible as well. Because this is less than, this would be a dashed line, but because the points are so close together, I'm not going to put like tiny tick marks in between. I'm just going to call this a dotted line and draw arrows at the end. This would be shaded above or below? Um, below. Mm -hmm. So that would be underneath here, this area right here. And then we can graph the other one. Start at negative 1. Your slope is negative 1, so up 1, left 1, or down 1, right 1, as many times as possible. Fill up your graph. Again, this is a dashed line, but I'm just going to leave it dotted. This would be shaded above or below? Four. Four greater than? Above. Above. So above, in this case, would be this way. So our overlapping area should be this triangle right here, triangle-ish shape right here. Before we move on to the next one, do you have any questions about that? We're going to do seven on the back of this. These are both um, already in slope intercept form, so we just need to graph them. For the first one, start at positive six. We can't go up five, so down five and to the right one. As many times as possible. This would be a dash or a solid line. Above or below? This less than, are we shading above the line or below it? For less than? Below. From your y-intercept, that would be everything underneath it, so this area right here. And then graph your other one. To start at negative 1, your slope is 2, 
Go up two to the right one as many times as possible. And down two, left one as many times as possible. This one would be dashed or solid. Shaded above or below. It's greater than. Could we shade above the line or below it? Above. above. So at our y intercept, above would be up. So that would be this area right here. So they basically over or intersect, overlap. Almost everywhere, but not at the same time. Questions on that one? Turn to the page I have you skip, the calculator instruction page, and grab your calculator if you didn't already. If you already have your calculator, reset it, second plus 712. These are very similar to the instructions we did before. We're just not going to do two at the same time. So just as before, you're going to go into apps, right next to map, and find your n equals button. So apps, n equals, hit enter, and then enter again. Apps and equals enter and also the steps are on the calculator page in your notes. We are going to use the two um, inequalities that are already on the calculator page. The less than 3x plus 2 from step 3 and greater than or equal to negative one-half x minus four. So if you're hovering over the equals, and we need to change this to less than, less than is above window. So hit alpha window, and it will change. And then go out of it, go to the right of it, and put the rest, three x plus two. And then do the same thing for the second one. Hover over your equals. We need greater than or equal to, which is above graph. So hit alpha graph. And then scroll to the right to put in the rest. Remember that in this mode, you cannot use fractions, so you have to use parentheses. So negative one divided by two inside parentheses and then your x minus 4. Once you have your two inequalities, hit graph. Now mine will show up in color. Yours will just be black sets of lines. But you should still be able to see where they overlap. 
So this would be good to make sure that you graphed it correctly. The lines are correct. If this is supposed to be a dash or a solid and you didn't do that, you could fix it. Then I'm going to show you one other thing. If you go into shades, so alpha y equals for shades, you get these options. So right now we're looking at the original shade. That is a good one to look at. One is also a good one to look at. So if you go into one, this is what happens. It shows you just the overlapping, which is good if you need to know where that overlapping is to make sure your overlapping is correct. The other one, so if I go back into shades, alpha y equals, the union won't help you at all. Because it does this, you don't want that. That doesn't really help you see where they overlap. You just see a bunch of everything. So don't use two. One or three is fine. Right? And remember, that's just to double check yourself. You don't have to use that, but it is a good tool for you. And then, of course, while you're practicing, you still have Desmos, so you can put that in, see where they overlap and things like that. Look in all of the examples we did not do. Find any you want to see, go over, have questions about. If you want to see another one done in the calculator, let me know. If you want to see one done in Desmos, I can pull that up and do that. In 12, you need to solve both of those inequalities. You can do the first one and then the second one. We would need to subtract x to the other side. So we have negative 2y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 12. Divide everything by negative 2. y is now less than or equal to 1 half x minus 6. Um, you can, I'll go ahead and graph that now. So start at negative 6, and you're going to go up 1 to the right 2 as many times as possible. Down one, left two, as many times as possible. This would be a solid line. Shaded below, which would be underneath here. And then we would do the same thing for the other one. Subtract your x on both sides. Divide everything by 2. So y is less than or equal to negative 1 half x minus 4. 
So we would start at negative four, go up one to the left two as many times as possible, fill up your graph. Down one, right two as many times as possible, fill up your graph. This would also be a solid line. Shaded below. So the overlapping area would look like this. Don't worry about this application. Any other problems we want to see, go over, have questions about? also need to solve these. So for the first one, subtract your 7x. You have 4y is greater than or equal to negative 7x minus 32. Divide everything by 4. So you have y is greater than or equal to negative 7 over 4, x minus 8. Start at negative 8. Our slope is negative 7 over 4, so go up 7 to the left 4. As many times as possible. This would be a solid line. Shaded above. So if I look at my white intercept, that would be up. So this area. And then do the other one. So subtract x on both sides. Divide everything by negative 1. The sign would change direction. y is now greater than x plus 3. So we would start at 3, go up 1, over 1 as many times as possible. Fill up your graph. This would be a dashed, or in this case, dotted line. Shaded above, so from your y intercept, everything above it, up. So the overlapping section would be this area right here. For the remainder of class, you guys have a bunch of different practice you could practice. Um, problems from these notes, you can check yourself using Desmos, the calculator, the 
completed notes that are already on Canvas. The Khan Academy, any of them, compound inequalities, any of the graphing ones, the systems ones. So the ones that are due this week, the stuff that's due next week, the past due, monthly step inequalities, any of those. In all of the papers that were passed out, your review is also there. Remember, your quiz is on Friday. So be practicing all of these things. Let us know if you need our help or have any questions.